So death, death really expresses all of the absurdity, the futility, the weakness, the impotence of our existence. But the really mind-blowing fact is that Christ has shown us what it is to be God in the way that he has died as a human being. And that's just so awesome that it just takes my words away, but we'll have to unpack it a little bit further to really to get to the heart of that. It's worth recalling that the disciples did not really understand who Christ was before the Passion. There's only one point where one of the disciples, Peter, on the road to Caesarea Philippi, says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Christ says, you are the rock, I'll build my church upon you. He starts telling Peter, I've got to go to Jerusalem to suffer. Peter says, well, that's never going to happen to you. And Christ says, get behind me, Satan. So the one time before the Passion, when one of the disciples recognizes who Christ is, he clearly doesn't really quite get it. He, stops to, he tries to stop Christ going to Jerusalem. He gets called Satan. Apart from that, the disciples just don't get who he is in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the synoptics especially. At the Passion, at the Crucifixion, they run away. The empty tomb, they don't understand. Why is the tomb empty, they say. And then the meeting the risen Christ, they still don't get it. They say, who are you? Are you a stranger? What's, what, haven't you heard what's been going on about this Jesus? We thought he was going to save us, but when he got himself killed, we went to the tomb, we found it open, we got no idea what's happening. And they're telling the risen Christ that. It's only when he opens the scripture and breaks the bread that they finally now get who he is. That this crucified one has destroyed death by his death. This is so important. It's not that he died because he was human, but because he's God, he's able to get himself out of the grave, as is often suggested. If that were the case, that would be great for him, but it doesn't help anybody else. Okay? We sing at Pascha so frequently that we no longer hear it. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and to those in the tombs bestowing life. It's by his death that he destroyed death. If he had conquered death in any other way, what part could we have had in it? Think about it. If he had shown what it is to be God in any other way, what part could we have had in it? Because it's a fact that death is the only thing which is common to all human beings from the beginning of creation onwards, throughout every culture, time, space and race. We all die. And it's the only thing which is completely inescapable. Whatever you do, you are going to die. And so the only question is, that you have to ask is, how am I going to die? Well, Christ has showed us a way of dying as a human being, which manifests the life of God, and that is now given for us to do as well. We are able to enter into the life of God by ourselves, no longer being passive victims of the absurdity of of our fate that we're going to die, but by being active agents of the fact of our mortality. Not going to commit suicide, absolutely not, but dying to myself, to my ego, to my passions, to my desires, to, to, to the old Adam in me, so that I can start to live in Christ, living for God, living for Christ, living for my neighbors, laying down my life, and at that point, I actually start to begin to live in the life that is Christ given to us by the life-giving Spirit. So that's what we are able to do. The very absurdity of the world is now turned inside out and now becomes a very locus of meaning um, for each and every one of us as we enter into Christ. And this is something that is a free act on my part. I voluntarily desire now to die to myself. My existence is now grounded in freedom in a way in which it never was before I encountered Christ. Then I was simply thrown into the world, I had no choice about it, but now I've got a choice to ground my, my existence itself in life and love, the life and love that are God's own. So I'm living in an uncreated manner. And this is what I'm going to continue doing until my actual death. From the time of my baptism, where sacramentally, once for all, I die to myself, Sacramentally once for all, but I'm still learning how to do it. I'm still learning how to take up my cross. And in a very kind of paradoxical way, I'm now caught in the, in the paradox of the first person singular. At the end of the day, I can only say, didn't I die well to myself today? There's no other way of doing it. It's 
it's still me who's doing it. But as I learn to let go of myself, my passions, my egos, my desires, I'm able to say more into, into thy hands I commend my spirit, so that when I finally die, as we all ultimately will, I will be able to say into thy hands I commend my spirit. If, on the other hand, I haven't learnt how to do that, but still think that my identity, my value, my honour, my worth lies in my public image, in my possessions, if my heart is with my, with my possessions, the things I love, then death undoubtedly is going to be painful, because it will be a separation from all of those things. And I would actually suggest that all the imagery of hell and... Um, purgatory and all the things you get, especially in the Middle Ages, is a dramatization, a visualization of the pain that death will have if your heart is still with things in, in this world. If, on the other hand, I've been able to say, to, to die to all of that, already now, to begin to live the life of the kingdom, already now, I'll be able to say, to thy hands I commend my spirit. And, intriguingly, at that point, I finally become clay. Yeah, I've never been clay. You know, talk about God taking clay from the earth and fashioning a human being. Well, we might think of that as happening way, way, way back when, you know, the beginning of all time, but I've never become clay. But when I finally do this, and in my dying breath, saying to thy hands I carry my spirit, then I become malleable clay in his hands, and he, can he now will be the actor, not me. He'll be the actor fashioning me into a living human being. And until that time, <coughs> um, I'm living towards that and finding life in that. So, the heart of the Christian faith really turns around the absurdity of this world, gives it meaning in a life-giving way. Nothing else does that. That is what it means to put on Christ. That is what it means to put on his identity. That is what it means to become a living human being. And ultimately, uh, that is what it is to be God's creation. Traded money and lands, family.